Right. Got some real shit to say. <laughs> oh, it's been very interesting. And I've had a bad day. And I love bad days. And I love being able to work from my bed. I feel very grateful that I have that luxury. All right, let's just get this up. And you can see I've been crying quite a lot, actually. Surprised my eyes are not puffy. I woke up this morning just going, what, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> so I've had a full bed day and I feel like my head is like half cut off. All right. <laughs> Got some real stuff to say. As always, I'm just gonna share this. And I don't know if I let me do that, no. Okay, we're getting there. Myself talk ten times over. <laughs> All right, I've stirred a little bit of a hornet's nest today already, so I don't know that you want to listen to this if you're not ready for a hornet's nest to be stirred up either. Ah oh dear. Curious how you guys are feeling, or whether it's just me feeling this way. I'm about to be really real, but when I speak what I speak on this live stream because I also feel like for quite some time I've been holding my tongue because for quite some time I feel like I've had to be prim and proper and I'm like that is not fucking me like what the fuck happened like that is not you Hannah like worrying about what people think and have to be that prim and proper no 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 just no. <laughs> Just fucking no, right? So some things on this live stream might offend you. And if they do, I urge you to look within. Because I've been triggered as fuck the last few days. And some of you might have seen that, was it last week or whatever? I'm very out of time. Yeah, it was last week. I don't know. 10th of October. Last week, I think. <laughs> maybe a week or so ago, that this huge, like, parasitic demon entity freaking, like, released from my system, and I was just like, holy shit, I did not know that that was there. At the same time, I know it was there, and I've shared this in my trust intuition in full detail, my tribe, because that's where I get support as well. But it's just been like this huge thing. So there's a lot of things I want to cover on this live stream. There's a lot of realness I'm going to speak that might trigger a few people. But I've been holding back for way too long. And I never used to do that. And I did get in my head along the way through this mentoring program that I had to be someone else other than who the fuck I am to prove a point to be what? To do what? To do what exactly? right so yeah so let me just bring up the comments here with this and i'm 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 gonna start unleash okay <laughs> have i just been given a permission slip or what <laughs> i'm fully in bed i've well, i have moved from today because i i don't know if i need to move this closer or something i don't know i don't know it feels weird being in bed because i'm like I don't know, I'm sitting weird or something. Something's not right, wait on. How do I change this? What's going on here? I've even been using my other little thing that's kind of weird. What, 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 what the fuck's happening? Hang on, wait on. I gotta like be at least comfortable doing this. I thought I was, but maybe not. And you can see that I've been crying. I went through a fuckload of tissues last night. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, and I just feel weird. Because I'm sitting side on and we've spoken about this in near chakra consciousness. I'm like, to the side. And even my dress is like being weird or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. Whatevers. <laughs> Whatevers. Okay. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to start by talking. That feels a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start by talking about this, like, moving house. Not moving house. Going to the Gold Coast. Not going to the Gold Coast. Like, what the, what the fuck, right? And, you know, like... Some 
that's just my daughter talking to her friends. <laughs> so the thing that inspired me to actually get on this live stream and be really fucking real is actually someone who I haven't, I don't know, heard much, listened to, whatever, for quite some time. I have one of his, um, well, his tarot deck. And I freaking love his tarot deck. It's very dark. I meant to grab it to come in on this live stream and I forgot, so maybe I'll grab it soon. And pull a card just to see and confirm what's going on. I'm very conscious that the full moon peak is like two days away or something because I'm holding the full moon ceremony and always um, three days out from the full moon, it's like the window, it's like the bubble window that I talk about, three days, three weeks, three months, three years, whatever. Look on my phone because it asked me to log in. I'm not freaking... Oh, it didn't ask me to log in this time. Good. Um, full moon. Yeah, so full moon is like, yeah, so one, two, three. Well, now it's three. I was very conscious about this window of time, right? And like I said, I was listening. He just released a podcast on YouTube. And, and before I found his podcast on YouTube, just like, I don't know, an hour or so ago, I'd been like... It was interesting because I was processing this before I came on this live stream and I was like, it just inspired me. He inspired me. He reminded me who the fuck I am. He gave me permission to feel all the fucking feelings. And it's made me question, well, when did you stop doing that? Now, I've been in a mentorship for the past three and a half years, which I released myself from in June. And then two weeks ago, I actually removed myself from all the trainings and like fully stepped away from it all. And I think I've spoken about this a little bit, like there's a there's a time where you're triggered and you you need to look within. And then there's a time when you're triggered and you just need to fucking leave, right? And I've stayed in that situation for as long as I did because I was like, oh, it's my reactions. Oh, it's my issues. Oh, I need to work on the stuff. And sure, yeah, I needed to work on some of the stuff. But then it gets to a point where in, your intuition is saying, this is not in alignment, you need to fucking leave. Now, I know I spoke a little bit about this the other day, and I really feel like my dress is coming down or something, but it's whatever. And, um, you know, like the thing about moving house, not moving house, moving house, moving house, like not moving house, and then listening to his podcast, I was just like, fuck, everything is making sense, and it's reminding me who I am. And I follow a couple of mentors, like I have several mentors, I always have for, you know, many years, and... And then listening to him, it was like, wow, where the fuck did Hannah go? And I was contemplating this before I got on this live stream. And I was like, I always used to speak like this without even thinking about it, without being like scared of what people think, without it like, oh, I better be prim and proper to do what? Right? No, 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 no. Like this is about being real. And if you can't handle real, you need to leave. Right? If, if you're telling me that I need to be prim and proper or that I need to like be a certain way to earn a certain amount of money or I need to do this or I need to do that, like, <clears throat> oh my God, it makes me sick. Right? I can't believe I was in it. But it, listening to his podcast reminded me of that and I was like, why did I stop doing that? And it was like the people that I was around is that it's not okay to feel emotion. And I think that even though they're like, yeah, it's okay, like to my face, but then they go and teach and preach that it's not. And when you're in a situation where people, I want to say subconsciously judge you, or people are like saying one thing to your face, but actually don't believe what they're saying, and actually don't have the fucking courage to say that to you, and actually like teach something else, like what the fuck is that? And why would you even have somebody in your fucking mentorship that you just don't align with like I don't, I don't really understand that like they say that to your face but then it's like behind closed doors it's a totally different fucking story right and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this with domestic violence or abuse or anything like that right I'm like that was primary fucking what it is right and it's interesting because on his podcast he's talking about the spiritual communities and like how he just doesn't be a part of them because they're all like bullshit basically well he didn't say that that's not his words but it was reminding me I'm like that's what I believed. And the thing is, is that 
what I, you know people have been asking me lately like are you okay and I'm like well no I'm not okay I haven't been okay I've been actually like removing myself from situations that have been holding me back that have been saying one thing to my face and another thing behind my back and then like teaching and preaching something else but telling me something completely different or not even fucking like speaking to me about it it's like what what the actual fuck why do you tell somebody not to use psychic in their business don't use the word psychic it attracts a certain piece of person don't don't use the word spiritual it attracts a certain person but then they go and like do that in their own business i'm sorry but that's where i draw the line i was like no 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 no. what what, what is that like i'm here recovering from total crippledness right now if you're going to turn around and tell me that i'm being a victim right now you can also leave okay because this is about being real we're told from a psychological perspective that we're not supposed to feel that way, that we're not supposed to be that way, and I tell you what, that sends somebody over the edge. That literally sends them to the other side. If you're telling somebody not to be depressed, or it'll pass, or it'll be okay, or just raise your vibe, I'm sorry, but you're going to send somebody spiralling down further. Now this whole experience has reminded me who the fuck I am. I sit in the darkness with people. I am the dark. I stopped using dark tarot cards for my readings. I stopped doing all these things because there was a judgment in my awareness that I was feeling that it was not okay to be that person, that it was not okay to have a voice about the level of darkness that I was feeling, about the level of like all the, all the thoughts, all the dark negative thoughts, all the like liking being dark. Like there's nothing, you know, it was like, no, you need to like raise your vibe and raise your standards and raise your frequency. And I'm sorry, but like, I am the fucking dark. I'm a priestess. I fucking hold the light in the dark, right? Like telling somebody not to be dark or don't be depressive or don't be suicidal. I'm like, come on, really? <sighs> I've not been okay and I've kept my voice shut. A lot of people, like I, like I said, have reached out and listening to his podcast, it reminded me, I'm like, man, I used to talk about this stuff all the time and I used to be okay about it, but I've had this like judgment that like, oh, you need to be a certain way to like fit in this group and be this standard of, you know, earning money before you're accepted pretty much. Like, no. I know it sounds like I'm bitching and hey, maybe I fucking am. Because at the same time, I've been battered and pulled down. And yeah, sure, some people would be like, we should have left that situation earlier. And I'm like, well, do you know what? The reason that I stayed is because I've been told that my reactions are the killer of all my relationships. Now, as somebody who has been disowned by their family, who, you know, is told that they're crazy and psychic, you know, psychic, crazy and psycho, by the ones that are closest to you, who are supposed to stand by you, who are supposed to stand up for you, but then when somebody flicks the switch and then they run back to their little family and, you know, they tell you that they love you and want to spend the rest of your life with you, I'm sorry, but there's, that fucking hurts. That really fucking hurts. And when somebody will sit there to your face and say things to you and then go around and do, like, no. So, no, I haven't been okay. No, I'm not okay, but I'm also being real about this because I've shut my voice down so fucking much and I'm tired. I'm so tired. I think I'm exhausted because I'm not speaking my truth. I'm exhausted because I've been holding down my voice. Now, it's funny that we're almost finished ear chakra consciousness in my inner circle and we're about to step into the throat chakra consciousness, which isn't just about speaking a truth, but it's about living it. And listening to his podcast reminded me, I fucking live in the dark. I am an outsider. I am all these things and I feel the darkest of dark feelings and I sit there with them and I travel them. But the groups that I've been around have told me and that's their philosophy that it's not okay to feel those feelings. Now, I don't know what I was doing staying in those situations. Like, you know what I mean? Like when I look at it now, I'm like, man, that is like the total opposite of what I stand for. As a parent and with conscious parenting, with aware parenting, more to the point, 
aware parenting is about sitting there with the child in their most screamingest, angry, biggest emotions and saying, I'm here for you. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be sad. And letting your child have the full range of emotions because if you do not, they will be healing from it in adulthood, just like fucking society. And we wonder why society is like it is. It's the opposite of what I teach. I know, right? Let me look at these comments. I know you guys are talking to me. I'm like, what the fuck? Right? And then I go and see stuff and I'm just like, man, why, why would you say something to somebody's face and then go and do it in your own business? Why would you say something to somebody's face and then be completely different in a, in a different circle of people? Like, I, I, I don't understand that. And I think that, that that's where my freaking like earth angel heart or whatever the fuck I am, it just doesn't comprehend that. My indigo truth self is like, oh, what? What? Speak a truth and live a truth. Yes. <laughs> yes. Before there is light, there is dark. With the light, there is dark. Good with the bad, bad with the good. Yes, all of them. You, you need to feel the dark in order to see the light. Yes. I'm fucking good at sitting in the dark. I'm so good. I travel the dark so much. I travel the dark more than you guys will ever know. <laughs> more than you will ever know. But listening to that podcast, it, it, and it was so interesting because, like, you know, I've listened to, like, other mentors, and I've listened to other mentors, and I'm like, ah, yeah, okay, cool, and I'm trying to get on with it, trying to get on with it, and then I listened to his podcast, and I was like, <gasps> my soul was fed. I was like, oh my god, where the fuck is Hannah been? <laughs> I'm, like, listening, just going, oh my god, you're like, I could have done that podcast. It was like, you know, the suicidal thoughts, the not wanting to be here anymore, that level of darkness, the isolation. Like, and he's down in Melbourne, right? And Melbourne have copped it harder than anyone in the fucking planet. And do you know what? Just like, you know, and I was listening to it just an hour ago, like I said, it just literally like freaking brought me back to life. It reminded me who I am. <laughs> Even with the bugs around and the ticks and the snakes. And that's a whole nother story I'll talk about in a minute about moving house. And, and you know, like just, I think it was yesterday, I think it was this morning actually, because I've had a very small, very slow morning. I've been in bed all day, which I really appreciate, because it's got the best view as well. I'd show you a bit of sock now. And, you know, like, I was only thinking this morning or yesterday or something, like, this level of loneliness and isolation is fucking killing my soul. Hence, I've been, like, trying to, like, move to the Gold Coast. So I'm like, bring me back alive. Like, you guys saw the photo and I posted and I was just like, I instantly feel better. It's like I'm plugged in or something, right? And I'll talk about that more in a minute. And in that sense of like, you know, like that isolation and the loneliness, like I've been, I've been processing it. Like I just stepped out of a freaking mentorship after three and a half years. I understand that I have the mother wound. Like I'm very fucking clear about my wounds, right? Everybody fucking has wounds. You tell me you don't, you fucking do, right? I see them. <laughs> I see them. That's my gift. That's what I do. I'm very conscious that I have a father wound and a mother wound. I mean, who the fuck doesn't, for fuck's sake, like for real, right? And I'm also working on them. And what's really interesting is that being out here on 250 acres, 45 minutes drive, 20 minutes drive to the closest town, which is just like nothing, you know, like it, it's a big deal, right? I can't just go out and get a coffee and say hello to someone and come back and work in five minutes. Like, it, you know, it takes me a good three hours round trip and it, Anyway, I know I've spoken about that before, but the point that I'm sharing this for is that when I was here, you know, like the isolation and the loneliness, and I've been processing it, like this is a thing where I like, I don't usually speak about this stuff anymore, right? And, and but now I am again after listening to his podcast, because I was just like, man, like this is who I am. Why should I be hiding that for like, oh, you shouldn't feel your emotions because you need to be high vibe. I'm like, nah, man, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't want to work like that. That's not high vibe, by the way. High vibe is grounded and present and very conscious of all your emotions. It's called conscious feeling. That is my purpose to teach you. It's leopard delight. That is my purpose, is how to feel consciously and to still stay here and to understand that level of darkness, 
right? Not somebody come in and tell you that you shouldn't be feeling that and just override it. Like there's a time and a place for that. And there's a time and a place for feeling the level of darkness that nobody wants to touch. <sighs> what was I talking about? The loneliness, the absolute loneliness. Now I'm so conscious that I'm out here on 250 acres and I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, pretty much. The isolation has been killing my soul. I have been struggling with the isolation and what it's highlighted to me. And you know, and the thing is, is that I think this weekend hit me hard because I've been trying to move. I've applied for places down the Gold Coast. I keep getting knocked back. After the last one, I was like, if I get knocked back with this, I'm just meant to stay here and I'm just not putting energy into that right now. And then, and then, you know, I tried the dating app thing and that wasn't like, and I've shared about this before, it wasn't like, I was conscious, remember I did a post and I was like, I shouldn't be on here, I'm not happy with my life, I need to get happy with my life before I can do this, right? And I pulled out of it and, you know, it was kind of like, and like I said, that opened something in me, do you know what I mean? I was so conscious and I posted about that, right? And I've just, I've, you know, it's not like given up, but I just like, I'm not on that, like, that's not the solution, right? I'm very conscious of that. And after the, the house thing didn't move, you know, work out, I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm meant to be here, right? And this weekend I've been really, well, last week or whatever, I've been really struggling with it because when the cat's been baby snakes in, like tiger snakes and red belly black snakes, and, and, then, and then when you go out to your garage and there's four to five foot red belly black snakes like this if you're not in Australia they're like the most one of the most venomous snakes in Australia the tiger snakes I think there's like six most venomous snakes in Australia like these ones are in that bracket right and then there's the bandit snakes as well like like you know like when you just want to walk outside on the grass and you know ground yourself or go for a walk on the 250 acres that you've got all this land and you have to wear gum boots and watch out for ticks dropping in your hair and you have to watch out for the red belly black snakes and the tiger snakes like it's just not it just doesn't work for me and so I've been trying to do something about it and move and it hasn't happened. And so what it's showing, like what it's making me do is face this level of darkness. It's making me face this level of isolation. It's making me face this level of loneliness. And it's very, very confronting. And it's not about being a victim. It's about the reality, right? Because when I was like, I think it was last night, I was like, why? Why am I, I understand why, I'm, why am I facing this? Oh, you've got a mother wound and you need to heal your abandonment shit. And like, that's, that's part of it, right? But for a human to feel this level of isolation and loneliness, it's literally like, I want to say killing my soul. Like if I say it's like, that's what it feels like, right? And I understand when I wanted to leave last week or whenever it was, it's, there's a part of me that's dying right now. And I was speaking to Tamara about this today and all the things that used to fill me up have been taken away. I can't just go for a walk on the beach, like in the flash, so I can come back and work. Like it's a mission, you know, like all the things that I have a family who will say they care about me, but <sighs> I know a lot of you guys care about me. I can't leave. I could choose, but I choose not to. But I travel those feelings because those thoughts are very present at times. When I was listening to his podcast, I was like, okay, it's not just me. There's something about the the healers, the creatives. There's, there's a level of this going on. And sure, we can like wipe it clean and do high vibe. And no, I'm sorry, but... I'm obviously facing this for a reason. And as I said to Tamara today, like I'm conscious, I'm also conscious that this isolation out here, which is nothing like what Melbourne has got, but I'm, you know, what I wanted to say earlier, and I'll say it before I forget again, is that when I was like contemplating last night, I'm like, why am I feeling this level of loneliness? Like why? Like in a sense of, in a sense of like, you know, mother wound, like apart from that, was like, why am I going through this? Like, what is this? And and it dropped in around like 
oh, I'm, I feel like I'm understanding the feelings of what it's like to be in lockdown down there. Like that did come to mind. And then I find this podcast and I was just like, there it is, right? Aside from that as well, I also know that, and I'm very, very conscious that I'm stepping out of a patterning of someone who lives from a reactive space of trauma. And this past nine months, what are we now, October, so 10 months now, is I'm conscious that in December last year, I said that I'm not doing readings, I'm not doing everything any, anymore, right? Maybe you guys would have seen me do that. And then this past like nine to 10 months has been like slowing down, like not doing out of the, out of things out of a reaction. Like, and I've been working on that before, right? But this is really coming into a whole nother level of like, you guys would have seen me post, who am I without my trauma? Who am I without my family patternings? Who am I without blah, 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 blah. Now for years I've wanted, you know, it's always been a dream and a vision to have, um, you know, a, a property and set it up as a big sort of retreat. It's like a retreat center, but it's not a retreat center. I don't know what to call it. It's, I've seen it in my vision since I was 21 and I had my spiritual awakening. It's always been the motivation for creating everything I do because that's the ultimate goal, right? And, you know, now I'm on this property and if you guys have been following me, you would have seen I'm like, oh, well, I'm on 250 acres, but I can't fucking use it. It's not my land. I rent the house. The properties are just out. And sure, it's fucking beautiful out here, but it's very isolating. And the snakes and the ticks, sometimes I can handle it. And sometimes it's just a little bit too much. I'm on edge constantly. I'm like, this is not supportive. You don't have to live like this. Hence me trying to move house, blah, 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 blah. What is the point that I'm showing this? So the moving, not moving. Okay, so the releasing my trauma, right? Now, again, if you've been following me, you hear me talk about these timelines of healing. I'm also very, very conscious, so conscious. I'm so conscious that is like the first nine months of releasing a pattern or releasing a relationship breakup or somebody dying or some massive change in your life. There's like a nine month healing cycle and then it's an 18 month healing cycle and then it's a three year block. These timelines that I've worked with many, many, many clients over these years, I noticed this pattern and it's a timeline of healing. It's like from a time of a big life change, whether you lost someone through death or relationship breakup or career change or you moved house or some big change in your life or you had a baby or whatever it is, is that there's a th like a, there's three, six and nine months for sure. They're big like patterning points. And then there's, but the main ones is the nine month, 12 months as well, but then the 18 month point. Now I'm very conscious that I've just gone through that in September, right? It's nine months from January, right? And hence going to the Gold Coast, I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. Like I, I, you know, I'm learning so much about all of this and the trauma and the abandonment and the big, the big sense of loneliness that I am shifting in my life right now, right? Like I walked away from a lot of unhealthy, toxic relationships, like in the past few years and being out here, it's not just being out here, it's even just being out of the house I was in for, the, for eight years I was in my last property. And, you know, in, in that time I, I was, you know, I, I landed in that house escaping domestic violence, going through court, and then I was also in domestic violence, and then I was also healing that and walking away from that in that house, and then also built my online business that gave me the freedom to end up here. So I'm very conscious of looking at the healing that I'm going through right now. Now, I'm also very fragile and I'm also very vulnerable right now and sensitive and I have been getting triggered a lot, but it's also showing me that where I am now and shifting out of this mother wound, if you want to call it that, this trauma wound, if you want to call it that, or whatever fucking label you want to put on it, okay, and, and whatever it is, I'm very conscious that I am walking the talk, I'm living the truth. I'm living the healing. I'm an intuitive healer and life purpose mentor. That is what I do. Now, I had people tell me that I shouldn't be focusing on my wounds. I've had people tell me that I shouldn't be talking about this spiritual stuff. I've had people tell me that I shouldn't be, you know, blaming something on shadow work or doing this or that my guide said this. Like, do you know what? 
there was even a post that went out last night by a mentor who I'm currently fucking being mentored for in her programs. I love her fucking shit. Like, I love her stuff. Like, I wouldn't be where I am today without it. But it triggered the fuck out of me. I felt energetically sick and then the post came up in my feed and then I was like, wow. Like, if there was a cliff, I would be walking now. Like, yeah. She said, warning, may buy it. And I'm like, yeah, or make someone want to commit suicide. You know, and, and the, the reason that that cut me so deep I've realized in this processing in the past 24 hours is because actually that's who I am I'm an intuitive healer I'm a life purpose mentor I help you delve into the deepest wounds that nobody can help you with I am the most powerful healer on the planet some people will say that I'm not. You've not walked in the level of darkness that I have, that a lot of people have. I can hold space for shit that nobody can hold space for. I could hold space for murderers and pedophiles and all of those things that everyone is shunning right now. I could hold space for them. And I could hold space for them long enough to transform them. Now this isn't just an ego kick. This is the level of darkness that I walk. This is the level of shadow work and psychology and depth of your subconscious subliminal programming that you will never ever be able to walk yourself. This is my gift to humanity. This is what I do. And anybody who wants to tell me that I shouldn't be talking spiritual or saying the word psychic and then goes and fucking uses it in their own business while I'm over here going, hang on a sec, what the fuck just happened here? Like, no. Absolutely fucking no. Anyone who tells me that they shouldn't, that I shouldn't be talking about wounds and I shouldn't be talking about spiritual stuff in my fucking, like, I'm a fucking healer for fuck's sake. Like, that is what I do. Like, what the fuck, right? <sighs> so this moving, not moving, moving house, not moving, like, it's like, you know, I'm, I was also very conscious that I've just hit the nine month mark of what I'm releasing with the trauma and being in a new vibration of a new place. Like I'm out in the fucking hinterland, for fuck's sake. Like it's a very different vibe and lifestyle to being on the coast in a city around people, around people. I'm very conscious that I also just hit the 12 month mark of actually being in this house a couple of months ago. I'm conscious of these timeline breaks. It doesn't mean that I'll try and run away. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna feel the feelings of grief from leaving an old life because that's definitely what I'm doing right now. I'm leaving a life of city life. I'm leaving a life of patterning. I read something, I listened to something else today. And like I said, I listened to like four different things today. And it wasn't until like it hit my, it was soul food. I was like, this is my voice. This is my heart. This is the conscious feeling. Why, why haven't I not been speaking my conscious feelings? Because I got told that they were bad. You don't do this. You don't do that. And I'm like, what the fuck have I been doing in it? Okay, let me read these comments. Kerry says, oh my God, yes, I've been feeling and thinking the same in the last couple of weeks that I'm about to snap. Like, what the fuck, enough. If you don't like me, fuck off. Exactly. I'm like, what's going on here? This doesn't make sense, right? Monique says, that's for sure. It does send you over to the other side. I know, right? It's like, wow. Like, that's massive. And it's also like, is that how you really think about me? Wow, this is, this is interesting. It's kind of really interesting. Sharon says, yes, you don't need to keep re-traumatizing yourself by staying where you're triggered. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, exactly that, right? Exactly, like there's a time and a place for healing, there's a time and a place for looking within, and there's a time and a place for just getting the fuck out of there is just not in alignment it is not supportive it is not your tribe it is not your soulmates it isn't it's just it's not it's not emma says i've had massive shifts this week moving house got covid learnt lessons got my period and releasing all the new moon oh it's fucking that was huge this that was the new moon 
that was a new moon yeah that was a new moon it doesn't like that was next level that was that was ne some ne next level parasitic shit that just got released like that was big stuff it was really big stuff right um release that we're shifting into higher vibrations all the shit is lifting veils are dropped and new opportunities arriving the fear is gone keep it real yes <laughs> Keeping it real, and that's what I'm all about. I'm fucking at reality awareness here, like, supposed to be keeping it real. Like, where the fuck did that go? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yep, Shan said my relationship ended swiftly on Friday. Totally unexpected. Yeah, there's some really big shifts, right? Really, really big shifts going on. Louise says lots of crying myself. Yeah, so lots of you guys have been feeling these big shifts, right? Not very authentic. Oh, no, it's very authentic, yes. <laughs> Sadly, there are some just of those folk, you know, that's the difference. Yes, that's it, that's it. Scorpions walk the dark all the time. It's who we are. Exactly, right? Exactly. Thanks for all your love and support. Emma says, I'm in Melbourne. Oh, my gosh. Just has to post COVID another two weeks isolation and we open up Friday. I must have something else to learn. I will enter a week after everyone has good reason be in my darkness oh my god like and the isolation and so he's in melbourne so his podcast um i can share it uh, it should come up in my thing it's the el goliath tarot deck um which i used to use and used to love and honestly like i think i just got shut down so much or shut myself down because you know like oh don't don't be in that vibe and don't be that vibe like i'm like man i just like got the car on my dreams and they're telling me like I shouldn't have got a car because it's the wrong vibe for you like I'm sorry but what 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 what, what? um I'm just gonna pop his it's on YouTube it's about podcast YouTube um yeah that's really hard Emma and that's the thing like I've just been feeling that level of like the isolation like it's crossed my mind several times I'm like wow this is what it'd be like in lockdown and I'm kind of like in a self lockdown I'm like what is this about you know, and the other thing that comes to mind is like when I had my spiritual awakening six months after I did, I moved to Brisbane and I went through a similar feeling, not as dark and heavy as this, but very similar feeling. I was in Brisbane for 18 months. For those of you who don't know Brisbane, there's no beach in Brisbane. That's, you know, there's um, the island, you know, there, I think it's is it Morton, Morton Bay, Morton Island. Is it Morton Island of Brisbane? I think it's Morton Island. I'm getting confused. Anyway, without looking at a map, there's a big island. So it's kind of like mud flats and, you know, like it's, it's not, it's not a beach. I need beach, right? In a way. And so when I moved to Brisbane six months after I had my spiritual awakening, um, was there for 18 months in this particular house and a similar feelings. And I knew I was facing something and like all my resources are being taken away. I can't, you know, just jump in the ocean, like, quickly and have a quick swim and then get back to work. Like, you know, I'm not, can't just go to the coffee shop and, like, say hi to people, like, and actually talk to people, not cows. Like, you know, and just, you know, it's beautiful and peaceful out here, but it's, it's, it is isolating. And, you know, and I know I've been facing some real deep, dark stuff. And I, and at the same time, I'm consciously creating what I do want as well, because the other part of releasing this trauma and releasing everything that I've, you know, been letting go of and releasing the trauma shell and running on adrenaline and releasing all of that, like, the other thing that I'm very conscious of is that I've been working so hard all these years to get to a certain place in my life to have the dream life and live what I want, right? And in the start of that, you are running away from something. You are getting away from something. You are escaping from something. I've been escaping from domestic violence. I've been escaping from the pain of losing my family. Like, you know, being rejected from my family. They're still alive. Like, you know, and, you know, the pain of um, not being a part of something. Like, the pain of, you know, like, the pain that's been really hitting me as well is, you know, that I left home when I was 18, drove across the other side of Australia, and I've been here ever since. Like, I've lived on my own and in my own house for since I was 18, you know, sure I've shared, you know, a couple of times when I was 18, but you know, majority after that I couldn't live with anybody and so I've been living on my own as well. It's just something I've chosen to do. Some people say we shouldn't have chosen that and I'm like, well I did, right? And it's just like this thing of really starting to come into a whole different layer of who I am and releasing all the running away from. And now I've got to a point where it's like, it's kind of, I want to say it's hit me 
that I don't need to run away from anything anymore. I don't, like, I'm safe now. And I was conscious of this, uh, maybe six or 12 months ago, because I've been in this house for just over 12 months now. I was conscious and it hit me in this house. I don't need to run away from anything. I don't need to move to another place. I don't, I don't need to run anywhere. I don't, I don't need to go anywhere. Like I can just, you know, and it, it hit me. I've been on the run since I was 18. Like I left my home when I was 18. I had three younger siblings. I still do. And my mum used to babysit two other kids that were the same age as my two younger sisters. So there was like a house of five younger children that I grew up in. That It was just chaos the whole time. I, you know, I'm 12 years older than my youngest sister, so it was a big gap, and I ended up looking after them most of the time, and so I was out of there smoking weed most of the time, he was like, get me the fuck out of here. So at 18, I got the fuck out, <laughs> because I didn't want to be around the freaking emotional and sometimes physical abuse from my stepdad, and so I left. And I ran away, and I missed out on my siblings growing up, and... I've been on my own ever since then. And, and that's the level of grief that's been coming up. Because although I've done a lot of work over it and on it over the years, that level of healing, that, that level of grief, that level of the reality that I left running away and I've been trying to find my home ever since. And in this house, I've been able to stop. And I'm not running away from domestic violence. My daughter's father moved to New Zealand. He moved to another country. Like, yeah, she's left us all on our own. But at the same time, like, we're safe. Like, it's the safest I've ever been. And I know that's why these deepest, darkest wounds are coming up. And I know that a lot of people haven't been feeling safe in the world as it is right now with all the things. But I've been feeling the safest I've ever felt. And because of that, I've been the most on edge that I've been. Because how is it okay to feel this safe? After all the abuse, after all the narcissism, after all the put downs, after all the freaking you'll never make it, after all the you need to do something better with your life, after all the uh, I love you but my family doesn't accept you so I'm going to scuttle back to my, my family and I was going to marry you but now my family doesn't approve of you so you know like, like all of that is not a reality anymore and, and I have this clean slate to, to create my life from. And up until this point, it has been a running away from, for my, for my life, running for safety, <laughs> running to feel safe somewhere, to, to get out. I, I actually didn't know that. I was just getting out of the abuse. As a sensitive empath who is a half mermaid, half earth angel, ancient blooded healer who smells bullshit 50,000 miles away, I've been looking for safety without even knowing it. And at this point, I've been feeling the most unsafe and on edge because I've been feeling so safe. Because in this space now where I don't have to run away from anything, where sure I'm on 250 acres and it's isolating, but it's actually so safe. Apart from the bread belly black snakes and whatever. I'm sure there's funnel webs out there. I've seen holes. Funnel web spiders, you know, those other deadly things that Australia has. But that's why I wear gumboots, because I actually feel safe in gumboots. <laughs> so I can walk, but it's just like, ugh. At the same time, nature has been reviving me and healing my system. And now that I've just stepped out of other narcissistic, covert narcissistic fucking groups that say one thing to your face and something else to everyone else. I'm actually even feeling more safe. And so even my deepest, even deeper wounds have been surfacing. Because now my whole system is rewriting. And so one of the other things that I watched today that I started saying is that it was something about environment, which I'm so conscious of. I'm so fucking conscious of environment, especially after what I've learned over the last few years. 
That's why I wanted to get out of my old house. That's why I did get out of my old house. That's why I blah, 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 blah. But the thing I heard today, which I knew, but it was the reminder, but it was like, oh my God, how did I forget that? But oh my God, that's like new news in a way, but oh my God, I know that. Is that the environment that you spend time around, your system recalibrates to. So the environment that you spend time around, your system, your body, recalibrates too. I know I said it twice. So whatever environment you have around you, you absorb. You you energetically absorb that. Actually, I heard that twice today from two different mentors, actually. Just reminded myself. I actually heard someone else say that. Or maybe I was listening to them yesterday as well. I've heard this over the years. I know this stuff. I'm an empath. I fucking absorb stuff. I have a sponge clearing meditation. But the point it dropped in and reminded me is that I'm like, I'm on 250 acres. I'm on 250 acres. Sure, there's cows and it's partly farmland, but I'm on 250 acres in the Noosa hinterland, Queensland, which Noosa is a pretty, you know, up there, upper class suburb, if you want to call it that. And I'm in the Noosa hinterland, the hinterland itself and I'm on 250 acres, and this is the environment that I've been spending most of the time. No wonder I feel this level of safety that's making me feel so on edge because my entire brain neural pathway, my entire system, my entire nervous system, my entire endocrine system, like all my systems are recalibrating out of a flight and fight, out of a constant flight or flight, out of a um, absorbing everyone else's energies, I'm actually just out of the 5G zone, so I'm actually not in a in a 5G zone, so I'm not even in that. Um, sure, like there's still you know mobile reception. I'm not completely out of reception, but at the same time, I'm conscious that I'm you know like my entire system is recalibrating. And when I heard that this morning, I was like, oh, there's a whole nother level that I'm recalibrating to right now, and I've been feeling that a little bit over the past few days that I'm not in a city, like I'm not around that and I am recalibrating to something completely different here. It's a total different vibe. It's a total different space. It's, it's not on edge, you know, like, well, I know I've been on edge because that's what my system is used to. That's what I've lived in for 37 years. And that's now what's releasing out of my system and why now I've been feeling so safe that that is, it's like vibrating out of my system. You know what I mean? So I've been like in it and it's been fucking intense, right? Now, if I look at an energetic resonance to Melbourne, I think Emma, you just said that you guys are having freedoms this week, right? After I think it was 300 days that El Goliath had said, um, you know, being in lockdown, like it's huge, right? And, and so if I look at the correlation, it's like, oh, we're not in lockdown anymore. We can, we're free. We can go back to normal, definite inverted commas. But it's like when we are in lockdown, right? And I've obviously experienced it like Melbourne, but I did experience it at a time. It, it does make you on edge because you're like, oh, okay, what's going to happen? Okay, okay, okay. We're just like here, but we're waiting. Like, okay. Like, do you know what I mean? Like you're on edge. It's a change. It's not normal. It's not normal to be locked up. It's like locking a fucking horse in a tiny pen or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, right? And so this shift that I'm going through is a massive recalibration. I don't know where it's leading me to, but I can feel it, but it's not been easy. And there's been a huge, huge drop in around reminding me who I am. And it's okay to share this level of darkness because if you're not ready to hear it, you will get triggered. If you're not ready to shift it, you will get triggered. And if you're not ready to face it, you just won't even be here. And I forgot that that's how it just works. And I forgot that I just need to trust myself with that and just turn up and do what I do best. Yeah, to speak my heart. My purpose is to restore the heart of humanity. If I can't share my whole heart. How the fuck am I supposed to do that? My purpose is not like other people's purposes. 
Nobody's purpose is the same. But somewhere along the line, I got told that what my heart wanted and desired and experienced was not okay. And I say fuck to that shit now. <laughs> so I'm feeling better for sharing. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Let me check these comments. <sighs> so huge. Thank you so much for being here. Sabrina says, wanting human connection doesn't have to be tied to anything. I know exactly, right? That That's what came through in the processing last night. It was just like, you know, and the level of isolation that I've been feeling and the level of loneliness that I've been feeling and then trying to reach out to certain people and just getting like fucking like smacked in the face and like pushed off the fucking cliff. I was like, well, this, they're not the people, obviously, but you know. Um, Leanne says, which is the same pattern you were also working on when you were in Victoria. Um, is that the, the safety or shifting out the abuse? Is that what you mean with, with that? I know I shift, I was working on a lot in Victoria. <laughs> um, Emma says, snakes shed their skins. When they are ready to grow, the snakes are physical resemblance to remind you that you're giving to shift in higher vibrations. They have shown you this so you know where you want to go next. Yeah. I even got a snake on my, my arm. I, you know, I've been laughing at that sometimes. I'm just like, man, I'm shit scared of these snakes. Like, I'm usually good. Like, I've worked in a pet shop for four years out of high school. Like, I know how to handle reptiles, right? But little baby ones in little containers, not red belly blacks when you just, like, you know, got to save the cats and fucking, like, you know, I don't know. Like, the cats were under the meditation thing and I saw them all jump and I was like, uh-oh. And I'm like, I tell you, it's like my alarm bell. I'm like, I tell you, I get you fucking gum every time. I might bring the torch because I was like under the thing and I just knew and I'm like so we're down there and like Dave's got like cat cat and they just like take it aside and I'm like keeping my eye on the snake she's got another cat no like another round of cats and I'm just like fuck even myself I'm like how are the cats not dead yet like you know in my opinion because I'm just like I, I don't know but anyway it's kind of interesting the felines and the reptiles and the felines uh, win against the reptiles. It's kind of interesting concept given the world stuff. But anyway, it's a whole nother story. Emma says, maybe just maybe you're ready to walk into the light and not the dark. Yeah. I, and I feel like that's what I'm shifting out. But I'm also shifting out, I guess, the fear and, and the being on flight or fight and being on the running away from and being on the constant trauma and being on like all of that. And I know in myself, I'm shifting into a vibration where I attract people who do not abuse me anymore. Like at its core, that's what it is, right? And, and the past two weeks have shown me just how many more people I had to release that were still of that old vibration, which is kind of interesting to me because I didn't think that that was the case, right? Yeah. Yes, energy and motion, exactly right. And allowed to be scared and fearful. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, apparently I wasn't in certain circles. So it's kind of interesting. Thanks, Lena. I see you too. Money says, yes, you are. And yes, you have helped me. You have helped my butt big time. <laughs> yes. Yes, Chiron came to mind. Yeah, the wounded healer. Yep. Yep. Totally get this. You've experienced this too. Yes, exactly right. Yes. That makes heaps of sense. They say that the degree of Chiron in your chart is the age of your deepest wound within a year either side. I think from what I know of you, Hannah, this also lines up with where you are in the lifespan chart. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I need to learn more about it. Well, I don't need to learn more about it. I just book in with somebody. My astrology chart, I know it has a big deal with it. I know that like whatever thing is like right on the galactic center and not many people have that. I know I'm different, like all the things. So yeah. Um, the running, ah, uh, yes, the running, um, yeah, and that, that is what it was, and I also needed to shift stuff, and, yeah, yeah, it was that, wasn't it, the pattern that I was shifting out, yes, your Chiron is eight degrees, yes, yeah, I don't know, I know Chiron's like the, the wounded healer, but, like, eight degrees, what, what does that mean, like, do you know what I mean, like, astrology kind of goes over my head, given the fact that the only person in my blood family family lineage is like my great 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 uncle who studied astrology who i have his like ancient astrology books like which is a fucking phenomenal um and i still haven't read them and i got given them when i was 21 <laughs> my spiritual awakening so it just obviously doesn't seem but it's so interesting when i have had 
sessions with my astrologer and I'll be like, okay, well, I was getting this day and I was feeling these things and he looked on the chart and he was like, well, that's when this is happening. And after a while, it's just like, oh, I pick it up intuitively. It's like I read it intuitively. So whatever. I guess there's some of being drawn to it. And it says red belly black snakes keep the population of brown snakes, which are more lethal. Ah, that's so interesting. Yeah, I've started to be okay with it. It's so interesting after I have my big, because it was like, you know, three big red belly black snakes in a row, like three days in a row. And I was just like, ah, and then there was a tiger snake and I was just like, yeah, like it was just too much, you know? And I just, I ended up breaking down. And that's when like the one after the, you know, down at the meditation hut, I wasn't scared, but I'd had a big breakdown before that. And I know snakes are all about realizing the truth. Like I'm lapis lazuli, like I'm a freaking snake. And I'd wondered it, that the, now the 12 foot python isn't there anymore if the 12 foot python was keeping the red bellied black snakes around away because I they were, I never saw them last year. Maybe I wasn't outside as much or something. I don't know. It's just weird. But Ugh. anyway, Leanne says it means your deepest wound was likely to happen 7, 8, 9 and your 36 which lined up to 8 on the last bench chart. Ah, yeah. Well, that, I've, yeah, well, that's so interesting because, yeah, I have been. You're right. I have been conscious of that, I did share that trust intuition or something, pretty sure, and like, that's that's also what I've been consciously, you know, sitting in the dark and sitting in these feelings is that I know that, because when I was four to five was when my parents got divorced and went on the other sides of Australia, Perth and Cairns, I grew up in Perth, and so it's like the most opposite sides of Australia that you could possibly get, right? And so I'm conscious that when I was four to five, they separated on the lifespan chart that we teach in Trust Intuition. The age I am now lines up with four to five, four to five, six, right? So I'm very conscious that I'm dealing with the separation of when my parents separated when I was four to five. Like I've been very conscious of that through this entire thing. So the level of abandonment and, you know, I'm not worthy of relationships or whatever. This is like, that doesn't even come through. Like, you know, my thinking, I've just been in it. But at the same time, that's just like what it is right um so yeah obviously that's what I want to share let me just check that I covered everything I was wanting to talk about in my live stream because I can't remember where to put in the title oh yeah let's so fucking be real uh-huh I'm pretty sure I said everything yep so uh obviously started to speak my truth a little bit more as well this afternoon. That was before I even listened to the podcast. And it was really, um, I was just like, I channel these higher beings and there's like new technologies waiting to come in, but humanity needs to be better people first. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, that is just like primary, like authoritarian parenting of the fucking paradigm that we're living in right now. And unless you do aware parenting, and actually have a fucking child to understand authoritarian parenting, you just don't fucking get it. So I feel for them. But for fuck's sake, like, let's wake up here. Let's be, let's be fucking real. I'm going to go and get his card deck, because I meant to before, in like, I don't know, what's the word? I don't know if celebration is the right word. In honour of the awakening like it's uh, you know there's several dark decks that i've got and i fucking loved his deck i bought it and i used to use it a lot when i first bought it and then it was like it was too dark so don't use it whatever the fuck whatever not anymore So this is the one, I know it's back to front, but apparently Facebook doesn't freaking turn things around anymore. So it's a beautiful deck. It's beautiful, all hand drawn, all by himself. He's... I've actually been looking at it over these past weeks. It's kind of interesting. I've been looking at it on my shelf and thinking, hmm, it's kind of interesting in itself. You wouldn't fucking believe it, right? You guys just saw me shuffle that and pull one out. Who's going to guess what it is? <laughs> it's the fucking Shedding Snake. Like, I haven't actually even drawn this card before. 
when I've used the deck before. <laughs> and it's one of the bandit ones that I fucking just saw the other day. Like, no shit. You can't make this stuff up. You can't. <laughs> and the bottom card, the Nine of Wands, the darkness before the dawn. Okay. I, I, I got it. I get it. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, we don't really need to read it, do we? But I'm going to. And I'm. <sighs> got runny nose from crying so fucking much I've already gone through my tissues in the house okay where's the snake oh my god now my nose is really running because that's the inner crying oh, it's been crying so much okay why can't I find it hang on a sec L expansion it might be in the bonus cards is it oh expansion as well oh my goodness sorry guys <sighs> got my nose because it makes me want to cry I think just that's so bad <laughs> but let's be real shall we okay it's just gotta be here it's in the bonus cards I know it yeah I knew it that's so amazing I've never fucking pulled that card before I was just looking I've definitely pulled this card before as I just passed it um Where is it? I can't even find it. Oh, it's a really good one, so I want to show you. I've definitely pulled this one before, which is the Karmic Release card. I've definitely pulled that. See, I haven't used these for so long, but I definitely just, just have not pulled the Shedding Skin one before. That's just crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> snakes I've been talking about. I understand it's snake season, but sometimes, like, it just wasn't like this last year. Do you know what I mean? All right. Leaving what does not serve you behind. Allowing more space to accommodate your higher sense of self. <laughs> Breaking down and shifting old paradigms that do not serve you anymore. <laughs> Having the courage to move closer to your own authentic truth. Authenticity and truth, growing, reaching, striving, evolution, DNA. Mm. It's like when I was listening to his podcast, I'm like, you've just taken all the words out of my mouth. Like every single fucker word, apart from being in Melbourne with the lockdown. Everything else. Okay. This card is drawn to specifically shed more light on the concept of the major Kana card death. Like I said the other day when I was feeling that level of death, and I even said it, I think, today or this morning, like I was, I, was, I even said it to myself, I was like, it's killing my soul out here. And I was like, Ugh. there's a part of me deeply dying. Like I literally voiced that out loud to myself. I was so conscious of it, right? Here we see that in the process of shedding its skin in order to move forward from the space it was once in. Much like the death card, this card is looking at the simple truth of life. That life in itself is a con in a constant state of change, movement, and expansion. You are here to go through many changes, ultimately becoming a stronger and more defined version of your higher self. As your life changes, it requires a change in you to grow and evolve. Resistance to expansion in spirituality, in spiritually, can have dangerous health risks, not only mentally but sp physically as well. Our interests and ideas change and who we resonate and connect with changes as does everything else. Nothing can stay in a state for an extended amount of time as everything is in a state of being temporary. New things become found and older versions of things pass as this is also embedded in our DNA. What is DNA? It is more or less memory or data in code sequence that is in nature. Think of the person you were 10 years ago compared to the person you are now. This is everything we can talk about. It's so interesting because the video that I watched today, I haven't shared it yet because I'm still processing it because it's actually really deep. Speaking with a book publisher this morning, she sent it to me after something she said and I knew it was going to be confronting and it, it was, but it was talking about the DNA. Interesting, right? Yes. <laughs> you are constantly striving to reach a higher, purer truth of your soul's purpose. Or are you? 
Then think of the person you want to be or where you see yourself in another 10 years. These images will be very far apart from each other. Humanity is also expanding as a whole as well. This is known as collective consciousness. This is not this is not only in population, but in a collective consciousness and awareness. As we change and shift, things need to be moved, updated and ended to accommodate our own development and growth. This card is directly asking you to shed things that no longer serve you. Allow yourself to move forward. Align yourself with people that feed your spirituality and pull away from people that you feel hold you back. Like, this is just everything we've been talking about, right? Like, word for word. <laughs> of course. Life is too short to be around things that make you feel unhappy, stifled, or even trapped. Ah, all the things. And know that, in turn, other people will do the same to you on their journey. Allow this process to happen. Take what you need and simply just leave the rest behind. You are here to expand and flourish, not stay trapped in complacency and stagnation. Shed your skin and break free from your now tightening former par paradigm, much like a cocoon. It is time to push the edge and feel it crack. Well, we've been talking about edges and ledges and all the things, right? I'm like, it's lots of metaphysical ledges have been happening. Definitely. Oh my god. What are the fucking chances of pulling the snake card? Like, for serious. I honestly haven't opened that deck for... Fuck, it'd be almost 12 months or more because of the fucking... Oh my god. I love these dark decks. It's not even dark. It's just real, man. And <laughs> the darkness before the dawn. Like, for real? <sighs> Goodness me. Bless. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Cards do not lie, says Dawn. I know, right? <laughs> like, oh my God, it's just like everything we've been talking about. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing and um, sending you guys down to Melbourne. Lots of love. And to Emma, oh my goodness, COVID would be huge. And I trust that you have the support that you need. And speaking of support, um, doing what I love and doing what I fucking do best is I hold space for people and I help shift people and I help to travel the darkest places that you don't want to be here anymore because it is something that is shedding and shifting through you. And because I walk this path, because I know these steps, I have the capacity to hold you and shift you just by being in my space. Of course, we do work. Of course, we pick apart things. Of course, we give clarity and light and all the things on all the pieces and do all the things and psychic development and all the pieces the 21 day shifted program is where you get that best level of support the link is in the title of this live stream or it'll be in the comments somewhere or you can find it on my page reality awareness or in on my website whatever that is my cats are doing something out there so thank you so much for being here and if you've got any questions or comments please post them below and I shall see you very soon. Love you guys.